This is Seattle Podcasters Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Rigdon. On this episode of the show, we have Aaron and Maria from The Feminists Without Mystique. Hi. Hey. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yes. Thanks for having us. So could you tell me just a little bit about your show? Yeah. So we uh, we talk about politics, pop culture, a little bit about sex and whatnot through a, a feminist lens. Yeah. <laughs> and how long have you been doing the show? Since October 2018. Yeah. So maybe just like six months ish. Yeah, we've done 23 episodes. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's quite a bit. So how frequently do you po- publish? Every week. Once a week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. I, have you been able to hit every week? For the most Pretty part. Much. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of tough. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if there's like a planned vacation, we'll kind of, you know, pre record an extra one. Um, but other than that, we've been. We do it on the same day every week, so we kind of we've got our sketch. Yeah, try to keep it consistent for for ourselves. So yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because if you fall off, then it's sometimes hard to get back into that routine. Yeah, yeah. It's because it does take a fair amount of prep. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I can see how easily it would be to get out of the routine if we didn't keep it to once a week. Yeah. And what motivated you to start the show? Well, we we met in when we were college freshmen over ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. We were campaigning for Obama, and since then we've been uh, best friends, and we've always wanted to kind of do a creative project together. Um, but for a while, we lived in different cities, and then when Trump was elected, we kind of were uh, motivated to. Yeah, that was the catalyst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As it was, I think for lots of people, mm-hmm. um, and even then, it still took us. A year, yeah. year and a half to kind of get get up and running. But. Yeah, because we wanted to prepare for it, but at a certain point, you just have to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and we didn't hear that many. I mean, I, I like to listen to a lot of politics podcasts, like more at the national level, but I wasn't really hearing a lot of sort of politics and culture discussed through a specifically feminist lens. So, I and when I did, I was hearing perspectives that weren't necessarily exactly what I believed. So I felt like there was, there was space, you know, yeah. for us. Space for us. <laughs> and what motivated you to do a podcast instead of like, like maybe like a YouTube series? Um, That's a good question. I mean, Maria particularly is super into podcasts. I'm a fan <laughs> as well. Um, and I don't know. I don't, I don't think we ever really considered YouTube. Um, and also I think just having the option to not have our faces out there and not have people like, you know, because often when women are, you know, producing any sort of content, you're going to get a lot of <laughs> a lot of trolly trolls. <laughs> yeah, we've already had people say that we obviously don't have a good like good enough sex lives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like people just love to just say whatever. So I yeah. think having our faces out there on a YouTube channel might be yeah. just one step too far for us at yeah. this point. <laughs> Do you have any advice for podcasters facing that kind of criticism? Oh, man, I mean, it's we're both we're both sensitive, I'd say. So <laughs> I'd say try not to let it affect you or la- laugh it off when you can. But I think it's hard as a human not to take things personally. But, you know, try to also focus on the positive feedback you get. And, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, how do you take bad criticism? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I try to keep it in perspective. And yeah, I would say just and again, this is probably this is advice I have to just say to remind myself, but just to be listening to the positive feedback and, and, you know, people wouldn't, especially anonymous, you know, people on the internet wouldn't be giving positive feedback if they didn't genuinely feel that to be true. So Mm -hmm. I think just trying to have some balance in your mind. Yeah. So what have been some of the biggest challenges of doing this show? Um, I mean, I think we, we both work. uh, So there's that and we have like, you know, personal lives. And uh, so just, you know, especially in keeping it consistent week to week, just making sure to make it a priority and and all that. Um, Mm -hmm. Because it's not like we're unemployed and just doing this full time. You know, we've got our our jobs and family and life and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and and the discipline of trying Mm -hmm. to make sure that when, you know, we're tackling a subject that we both feel passionately about, it's, it, at least I've felt that um, I think I know a lot about it. And then as soon as we hit record, I'm like, there's a flood of doubts that come rushing into my head. So mm-hmm. just trying to make sure that as much as possible, we have as many of the facts and the quotes and the things in mm-hmm. front of us so that there's less 
it helps like mitigate that um that doubt that creeps in yeah research yeah (laughs) research and preparation Mm -hmm. (laughs) and how do you stay motivated keeping on doing these weekly episodes i mean we both really enjoy doing it and we really enjoy spending time together we live Mm -hmm. uh like a 10 minute walk from each other yeah Um, so we want to see each other regularly anyway and we both kind of get a fulfillment from this so Mm -hmm. that and also like I mean Trump's tweets and the the general cycle of news is so heinous that you know I feel like this is one way to yeah it's fulfilling and it's it's, therapy it's therapy (laughs) a little bit (laughs) (sighs) yeah so what have been the biggest rewards of doing this show um it's been cool getting um seeing people that we don't know start to listen and sort of having our uh, our listener base consistently grow a bit um, yeah. and having people find it that we don't really know how they found it and they listen to it. And, you know, when we look at the map of who's listening to it, we're like, oh, wait, I don't know anyone in that country or in that state, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's cool to see. That's been cool. And um, there have been certain, I mean, I, <laughs> I think both of us have some conservative extended family members that we, you know, we love and we Mm -hmm. care about. But um, I always find at family get togethers that it's really hard to have these conversations. And like, I mean, Trump's election really felt like a moment where it was like, where the battle lines were drawn um, and there's no coming back. And so one thing that's been really nice is I know that some of my conservative family and I think, you know, we like, they they listen and i think the cool thing about a podcast is that unfortunately you know they they have to listen and just they can pause or stop at any time but it's a one way thing where they're just getting our perspective and if they want to talk to us about it they can but um i know at least one of my uncles has reached out to say that he actually changed his opinion on something kind of important Um, I mean, they're all important, but this was like a pretty big deal um, based on listening to one of our episodes. And for Mm -hmm. me, I, that was really like a really, really deeply fulfilling thing. Yeah. And kind of, it's helped to facilitate conversations, you know? Yeah, for sure. And are you doing any kind of like ads or Patreon? A little bit. So we've done a couple um, like promoted posts on Facebook and stuff. And we're actually, after we're done talking to you, we're going to record some promos. Um, yeah. Cause that's sort of our next thing is trying to, you know, actively get more listeners and a more uh, aggressive, it's not the right word. Proactive. proactive. <laughs> aggressive, more proactive. Oh. <laughs> but and, I mean, at this point, no, we don't have, we don't have advertisers on our show mm-hmm. and we don't, we haven't done a, a Patreon yet. I think we're still sort of mm-hmm. just wanting to, grow organically and not you know not that I mean no one has really approached us yet but also I think it would feel weird to be beholden to an advertiser at this juncture and where do you host your episodes Podbean yes (laughs) yeah we like it and how have you liked that you like them yeah I mean we haven't used anything else but it's user-friendly it works we haven't had any issues with it yeah relatively affordable um for what we're for what we're doing. Um, and I, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we do like it mm-hmm. without having a real point of comparison. Yeah. But there's no, like no big complaints. Like you're not looking to move. No, no I, no. Yeah. I, sometimes I wish that the, this is just me being like, you know, I wish the stats were a little more like even more, you know, specific. Like mm-hmm. I wish we could see, uh, you know, they've switched the stats the way that they, uh, show them. Mm-hmm. And, um, a couple of different things they've removed. Like you used to be able to see like kind of by the day, the moment of the day, you know, who is where, where the download was coming from and then link it up with like Android or whatever um, platform. And uh, I liked that and they, they, I think they got rid of it or Mm -hmm. I just can't find it on the new layout, but no, that's, that's a very minor complaint. (laughs) Yeah. Podcast stats are always kind of a problem. And what kind of microphones do you use? Got the Yeti, the Yeti Blue. Yeah. New Yeti. Yeah. yeah. And you're happy with that one? Yeah. Yeah. We had like, when we were starting, we had sort of like a horror moment where, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> where like I had just up, upgraded the software on my Mac and it just stopped working. Like everything was the same. And for some reason, the Yeti 
and but we you know after a bunch of YouTube deep dives, we found <laughs> this like little Amazon Basics adapter, and that seemed to fix it. So knock on wood. But I haven't done any Mac updates since then because <laughs> who needs that? <laughs> <laughs> And do you have any tips for using that microphone? The microphone is very popular, but sometimes it doesn't sound all that great. Your show sounds really great. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Well, we kind of <laughs> jerry-rigged a little uh, recording studio in Maria's kitchen where we just <laughs> we put like chairs on top of the table. We put like a comforter over it. Um, so we kind of have our own little soundproofing that we do. Yeah. Um, I think that helps a lot because we kind of were experimenting around her apartment trying to find where we can get the best uh, sound quality. And uh, we found that that was the, the best way to go. And how close are you to the microphone usually? We're probably each about, I'd say like a foot and a half away or something. Yeah, maybe a little less, but about maybe that. Less. We try to stay equidistant. And before we start recording, we always do a little test. Yeah. Oh, you're both using the same microphone. So is there any kind of like difficulties in kind of sharing the microphone and making sure your volume levels are, um, you know, matching? Not really. They have because no. there's like the dual setting on it. And we, you know, we speak at the same volume. And so we haven't really run into any issues with that. Yeah, I think, you know, we've had, there have been moments where we're doing the test and it sounds like the mic is having trouble picking up one side or the other. And in that, it's been pretty rare, but in those times, I think I I basically just do the good old restart, reboot everything up and um, then just resync the Yeti with the software because we edit on Adobe Audition. Um, And it's, uh, yeah, I, I like the dual setting. I think, yeah, it's like the, the, I forget what it's exactly called, but it's like the, uh, you know, you need or bi-directional, oh, um, yeah, the bi-directional it. mic on the Yeti. So, and I think I missed a question, so I'm going to go back just a little bit. Had either one of you done podcasts before? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is our first one. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like I said, I mean, your show sounds really great. It sounds great oh thank you thank you jason that's that's great yeah yeah well we wanted it to you know we wanted it to have you know a high quality sound to it kind of out the gate yeah we we spent time working on that yeah yeah and i think you said but what software you use to edit uh adobe audition and how long does that like post-production take well not not that long actually yeah because we kind of uh what we we pretty much just well what Maria does because my computer doesn't support it so I like <laughs> dismantle our little studio while she does this but we pretty she just kind of adds the intro music outro music um, and then if there's any weird like you know if I burp in the middle or something <laughs> <laughs> cut that out <laughs> yeah it's something we we were thinking about trying you know our next step because I think at least in phase one which we consider ourselves like you know still to be in we were. Uh, you know, focusing on consistency and, you know, and content and the sound above all else. But I think in this, like maybe in the next phase, mm-hmm. a goal will be to make it even a little bit tighter on the editing. Um, I think what we run into on a practicality side too, is just what, by the time we're done recording, it's, it's late on a Tuesday night. It's usually like 10, 10 30 and we're tired. So, um, and we're just eager to get it kind of out, out the door. Um, but yeah, I mean the post, I would say, we honestly don't spend more than 20 minutes on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're not the type that needs to cut out every um and uh. No, maybe we should. We, we probably <laughs> should, but we don't. <laughs> Cross that bridge at some point. <laughs> yeah. I think the goal, I think at some point we do want to maybe focus on taking it to that next level where we take some of the ums and the, like, both of us have a tendency to validate validate each other in a way that's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, at least some feedback from <clears throat> my dad uh, <laughs> has been uh, maybe, like, you know, that can be minimized if we want to, (laughs) if we're looking for things to cut out. (laughs) Oh, well, I'll tell you my opinion. I think that like, you've got a very good conversational back and forth and I I wouldn't do too much different. (laughs) Oh, thank Thank you. you. (laughs) Thank you for the validation. (laughs) I mean, it does, it really does mean a lot because yeah, I think we struggle with, uh, what is it like? an inferiority complex or just like (laughs) just feeling very like, why are we, you know, what right do we have to be talking? Do we even know what we're doing? So that, that does mean a lot. Thank you. Well, yeah, some people, you know, they just obsess about it. And then, you know, when you cut all that kind of stuff out, it sounds oftentimes very robotic and artificial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you really want that natural kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then we're perfect. We're done. (laughs) (laughs) And how do you prepare for your shows? Um, It depends what we're talking about. Uh, I mean, we generally we meet on like a Saturday or a Sunday before to kind of go over things and some topics we need to do a lot of research on. But if it's like we had one episode, we just talked about kind of like dating horror stories. So for that, we just kind (laughs) of... Came with what we had. Came with what we had. (laughs) But normally it just involves kind of, you know, meeting up, discussing, doing some research. Yeah, we use um, we use Evernote um, to share uh, some sort of preparatory, uh, you know, links and Mm -hmm. um, facts and kind of like a little outline for the for the show. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a couple of snafus with, with that where for some reason, if maybe if we're both on at the same time, it like deletes the whole note and that has been kind that of traumatic. <laughs> so we've, you know, I think we've sort of backtracked a little and sometimes we'll have the notes in Gmail and upload them to Evernote like mm-hmm. at the last minute, but pra- on a practicality side, we, we do still use Evernote. Yeah. And so we, yeah, we decide like what main topics we want to hit. We don't, script anything yeah and do you ever have guests on the show we have not but we definitely want to that's another sort of next chapter thing um like we want to have her conservative uncle on yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah we do i think it'd be a good conversation yeah have like different viewpoints and also maybe people that are experts in certain ways i mean starting out would be generally i think people we know but i think we'd like to do that yeah for sure. And do you have any advice for brand new podcasters or, you know, people are just thinking about starting a show? Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we had, there was so much hemming and hawing, I feel like, of like, can we do this? Should we do this? You know, do our perspectives matter? But, you know, it's, I mean, it's a little cheesy, but like life's short and what's the risk really? Um, just, yeah. just do it. Just do it. Your perspective matters. It's going to be different from other people's. Mm-hmm. Ask um, for feedback. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, go forth. It's like, and I, I honestly, what I was cause listening to some of your past podcasts and um, in your trailer, you know, when you were saying the types of people that you interview, I just, I, I got a little kind of flutter of like happiness that was just like, we're doing that. We're those people now. And I think more people can do that. It just, it just takes like a little bit of front end effort. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people are kind of, missing or wanting sort of some sort of passion project so if podcasting is something that you want to to kind of fill that that space just do it do it and how much time do you spend promoting your show that's a good question yeah um i think i found myself myself spending more and more time on twitter Mm -hmm. um because we sort of split it up so like i do twitter and instagram and Mm -hmm. aaron does facebook Mm -hmm. um and again, I think also that's a next phase thing where we're going to try to figure out how to maybe in a more methodical way spend more time. But it's been really cool to engage with um, the, like, for instance, the Lady Pod Squad community on Twitter. It's like this really supportive group of gals. Um, and so that, so I find myself engaging more because I just genuinely want to and I want to mm-hmm. be sort of participating in this community. Um, yeah, I, but yeah, in terms of time, I would probably, I'd say at least a couple of hours. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's not that much, but <laughs> well, it's also something like, I think I mentioned earlier that we're kind of, uh, today we're discussing and, uh, kind of our next big thing is, you know, getting our website out there and really working on the promotion and the marketing of it. Yeah. Work in progress. Now that we have like kind of a solid database of episodes and whatnot and have you found any of the channels to be more effective than others um i mean facebook what's hard about facebook and i've talked to some of the um the other podcasty people about this is it's you can like you can do your promoted posts and whatnot and sometimes get some clicks and some listens from it but there's not really that follow back kind of culture on facebook that there is on instagram and twitter because you know you different podcasts aren't going to be able to like your podcast page. It's individuals. So that's a challenge. It's, it seems like the way to get likes from that is having people who genuinely like your podcast come and like it. Um, so, yeah, I, I found, I find that Twitter has had a sort of a cascading effect. Like 
you know, we found some loyal sort of loyal listeners from what I would view to be kind of like random areas. We found like, there's, there's a couple of like cool guys in Indiana who are into it. And a couple of guys in like North England who are (laughs) just like kind of like random places where we've just struck a chord and then they've recommended it to people. And, um, and I will say we've had at least this week, this is probably cause we just put it on PodCoin, but like mm-hmm. we had like a three, 300 people listen on one day. Mm-hmm. Um, which for us is a lot, which for us, for us, for our stats, that's, that's, that's a lot. Um, for, I think just putting it on the platform PodCoin. So, um, yeah, I think just in spending more time on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you keep up much with like the podcast industry news? N- not no. really. <laughs> not gonna lie to you, Jason. No. <laughs> no. I, I think sometimes I I like lurk there, you know, and mm-hmm. in, in in my in the Twitter feeds of people um, that are more on the national level. Um, and I think the only thing it, it does sort of maybe stress me out. So I because I think about how there. Are, I, it seems like there's a lot of media consolidation in podcasting now, from like Gimlet Media and stuff like that, and. Um, I, I just like the way I like the rogue like way that, that podcasts operate. So I think, uh, it, it's definitely, I find a little bit of anxiety in that, in that corner of the world. <laughs> and do you listen to many podcasts yourself? I listen to she listens a lot. To a ton. I listen, <laughs> I listen to several. She listens to a lot. A lot. <laughs> I feel like I fill, I, I fill all empty space with podcasts, yeah. which maybe I should like talk about in therapy or something, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and how do you find your new shows? The new shows that I listen. Oh, um, I think, you know, I think a lot of the time it's because of the, the shows that I like having guests on that I, mm-hmm. then I'm like, Oh, I like that voice. I want to hear what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, or by like, uh, Less, less so now that I'm introduced more to the indie podcast scene, I'm less scrolling the like iTunes charts, which, which I know everyone kind of lives and dies by the iTunes charts. But um, there is a lot of smart people um, podcasting that mm-hmm. will never make it. Or maybe they will. I mean, I'm not going to sh- shut them Jeez, all down. Maria. We'll never make it. To, but um, there's a lot of people who just are experts in their fields um, and – I've, I've found, uh, through, through our show Mm -hmm. and through just following different people on Twitter that that's now how I'm finding like new people to listen to. It's like the groups that we've joined to kind of partially to promote our own show. We've found shows through them, you know? Mm -hmm. And how can people find your show? Everywhere. (laughs) Uh, I mean, we're on Podbean, we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on YouTube, because why not? Yeah. Um, (laughs) And Stitcher. mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think the only place we're not yet is um, Google Play in terms of like the biggest places. Yeah, the big ones. But yeah, just to search for Feminists Without Mystique. Mm -hmm. Um, We're also on PodCoin if you want to get paid a teensy, teensy, teensy amount to listen. Um. And hopefully, you know, we'll have a website up and running soon. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show today. Thank you for for having having us. us.